This is the book of Proverbs 14 and verse 15. And it reads, the simple believeth every word, but the prudent man looketh well to his going. Before I get started with my lesson, I want to give all praise and honor and glory to the Heavenly Father and His Son by saying, Ka halo yim la, Allah haya nawa yahawa, ba shim yabashai, ba shim rakakwadash, all praises to our power, Yahweh ba shim yabashai, who is the God of the heavens and the earth and the God of the 12 tribes of Israel, you so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You comprise the 12 tribes of Israel. You are the chosen people of the Most High, Yahweh ba shim yabashai who is the God of the heavens and the earth. Double honor to the elders and apostles who've labored faithfully in his truth and are indeed the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Habayath, Madawada, the house of David, the brothers laboring on the four corners of the earth to make their calling of election sure, helping seal the elect of the nation of Israel for the return of our Lord, Hamashiach, Yahweh is at hand. And to the Akim and Akwathim who also listen, and believe on Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. To you, I say Shalom as well. So shalom to the hopeful elect. This is the brother Sakalai coming back with a quick lesson to the Spirit, Lord willing. This lesson is edifying for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear through the Rakak Wadash, which is the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to jump right into it and uh, get to the point. I saw this article a little earlier today, and uh, through the Spirit, I wanted to jump into it because, see, this shows. And I started with an opening scripture and I'll read it again. Proverbs 14 and 15, it shows you why the scriptures say that folly is set in great dignity. But I started with Proverbs 14 and 15. It says the simple believeth every word because see our people, you know, the Israelites are, are known as being simple in the Bible. That's why the Lord said that my people are foolish. They have not known me. They are sightish children. The Lord, the Most High was showing that his people are Asadish, which means stupid. Our people believe any and everything that Esau, you know, the devil, the so-called white man says, you know, and one of the reasons why, main reasons why they believe everything that this devil says, you know, is because um, our people have a, a God complex, you know, concerning Esau, you know, which is um, the reasoning goes back to you know, Stockholm Syndrome and post-traumatic slave syndrome, you know, which that Stockholm Syndrome is love for your oppressors. And that post-traumatic slave syndrome, you know, goes back to the fact that, you know, our people have gotten this great love and affection, you know, through through bondage, through 400 years of oppression. So that's the God complex that our people have with Esau Edom and, you know, uh, the, the, the whitewashing of the images and our main judge being Yahweh Shai, being painted as an Edomite. All of these things play into why people believe any and everything that this devil says, which you see right here on this article, which I'll get into the article here in a second. But as you can see the title right here on the article, you know, now Proverbs 14 and 15 says the simple, which is Israel, which is Israel. When you go into Jeremiah 4 22, which I quoted, you know, my people are foolish. They have not known me. They're Asadis children. So Proverbs 14 to 15 says the simple, which is which is two thirds of the nation of Israel. The simple believeth every word, everything that Esau says, everything that he puts forth in society, they believe it. And many of our people believe it because Esau will come speaking in the name of science. And we'll get to that through the spirit as well. So Proverbs 14 to 15 says the simple believeth every word. But the prudent man look at the well to what's going. Only the only prudent men, the prudent people on the on the planet, is the elect. They're the only prudent people on the planet, which is the elect of the nation of Israel. You know, the Bakarium in the Hebrew, which is the elected ones. So most of our people, two thirds, are simple. That's why the Lord says he's gonna kill two thirds of his people, pertaining to Zechariah 13, verses 8 and 9. So the simple you know, we call them simpletons. They believe every word. Everything that Esau says has got to be right. Because what does he do? He coming in the name of science. So I read the article from TMZ.com dated March the 24th, which was yesterday, 2021. It says, male shrinkage, penises shrinkage caused by pollution, so claims scientists. And, and these, you know, these witches and warlocks and these so-called scientists say a lot of things today. 
You know, this devil says many things, but that doesn't make it true. But they come in the name of science. And this is just another, you know, of many examples of how they come in the name of science, putting the science behind it to try to to give to um, to authenticate the things that they're saying, to give it authenticity, you know, and to give it, you know, authority and to give it, you know, um, to give it uh, some level of, of credence to what they're saying. They do it in the name of science and the majority of our people hear and see this and they believe it. It says, if you're a guy and didn't care about pollution before today, you might want to rethink that stance because your manhood and that of any future sons is being seriously, it says, uh, truncated because of it. So says a scientist, Dr. Shauna Swan, a professor of env environmental medicine and public at New York City's Mount Sinai Hospital made the startling claim in a new book of hers explaining that based on her research, male penises are getting historically smaller due to manufacturing byproducts. So now, you know, some doctor, some scientist and group, you know, uh, of, of people in this community believe that this is so. So they're putting this out and it's, and it's PhD is putting this out, this doctor and scientist is putting this out in a book. It says the substance is question is called pytolatus, which are chemicals created in the production of plastics, which when exposed to the human um, endocrine system, screws with our natural hormones process, a dynamic that Dr. Swan says is affecting our reproductive organs. Now, there could be some truth to some of this, but the point is when Esau speaks about science, because we, we, we found out, you know, through research as well, brothers and sisters are waking up to this truth of all the things, all the pollutants that's in so many things in the food, the water, the air, etc. So, you know, there's there's some truth to these things. But the, the point of the matter is, is if Esau says these things, our people have been saying it for the longest. But if Esau says it, then that's when they'll believe it. Because of that, that God complex they got, you know, that Stockholm syndrome. It says she cites different peer-reviewed studies in her findings, which say there's a scary trend of modern-day babies being born with noticeably short, shorter members, which she directly links to the the, the pilates. She says are sleeping, are seeping into our toys and even some foods we eat. Doctor Swan says. The same effect was observed in rat fetuses exposed to pilates and now is being seen in humans as well, which she calls a crisis in the making. This is part of a larger problem, which has also been touched on elsewhere. The fact that men's sperm count, counts are viably sperm and, and excuse me, sperm count and viable sperm worldwide is plummeting. Dr. Swan estimates that if this continues at the rate it is now, we'll all be virtually impotent by 2045. So now I'm going to stop there because I got what I wanted out of the article. The point is when Esau speaks and says something, you know, our people and the world for that matter, they believe it. They take what he says at face value, which a lot of it, you know, is nonsense. So there may be some truth to these claims, but all Esau has to do, you know, is say that science is behind it, whatever it may be. And that's been done over and over again. But see, the folly of this is that, you know, this man, this is the same man that has told you that the Crown 19 can be passed on by farting, you know? And, and, and these, these were, you know, articles that have been put out since this whole pandemic. These are the kind of things that he tells you. And then he'll put science behind it and our people will eat it up and just go believe it. Like the scriptures say, the scriptures validate everything, you know, that, that the hopeful elect men are out, you know, proclaiming, which is that the simple believe every word, but the righteous, the prudent men, they look well into their going. I mean, they don't just take everything at face value. We believe all the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh because the scriptures say that man shouldn't live by bread alone but by every word that comes out of the mouth of the Most High. So only the elect are believing the words of the Most High and showing Esau to be the devil, the deceiver of the earth. So he's doing all these things in deception. 
Everything is with deceit and guile. So now, another point I want to make is that when you go to my next precept, which will be in the book of Proverbs as well, this is Proverbs 27 and verse 12. You know, as we continue on, we see that this devil, you know, all his whole campaign, his whole MO is to deceive. That's why he's here. You know, he's the sword of, of the Lord and he's a, a, the, the, the deceiver. That's why he's known as a snake. He's likened unto a snake, a serpent. Proverbs 27 and 12, it says a prudent man, because it said that only the prudent will look well into their goings, because the simple is just going to believe every word. And that's one of the major reasons why our people are going to take the chip, which is the mark of the beast. Proverbs 27 and 12, a prudent man, though, foresee if the evil, the, the righteous, are going to foresee all the lies and the wiles of the devil because they put on the full armor of the Most High, meaning they believe in this word and come back to serving the Lord and spirit and the truth as an Israelite. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. And how do you hide yourself? By, by abiding in the words of the Most High, you know, having this wisdom, knowledge, understanding, faith, and fear. You know, that's how you hide yourself. But the simple, once again, two-thirds of our people pass on and are punished. And they're going to be punished by way of thermonuclear destruction and in the time of Jacob's trouble. So, once again, you see the simple and the prudent. You know, which two-thirds of our people are, are very simple. And only the elect are the prudent. The one-third has been prophesied. So, once again, anything this man tells our people, they eat it up. You know? The same thing with these with these vaccinations. Same thing with these, these, uh, this whole jab campaign that's going on. You can't damn, damn near hardly even speak about this and they'll take down your video and flag your channel as medical misinformation. That's what they call it. That's the lies of this devil when there's people actually dying from, from the jab. And that's irrefutable evidence, things that can be proven easily. You know, if, if the men of the Lord are speaking out about this, if they were lying, that would be slander and there would be a way to easily, you know, go... All the, the publications that have been putting this out, doctors themselves have been talking about this with PhDs, etc. Not that we need them to authenticate anything, you know, because all this is just known information. But the Bible shows Esau to be the devil and a liar, and that's what he is. So it says the prudent, you know, foresee the evil, but the but the 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 simple pass on and they're punished. Now, why is it important? Proverbs, we'll stay in the book of Proverbs. 1 and 22. And it reads, how long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? How long are our people going to stay in this very simple-minded uh, mind state? You know, stay in, 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 in this, you know, you know, in this, uh, um, this state of simplicity. How long are they going to remain asleep among the congregation of the dead before they wake up to the truth? How long, Proverbs 1 and 22, how long, you simple ones, speaking of two-thirds of our people, will you love simplicity? And there's, there's elect members that's waking up out of this that remains in this state right now because the time hasn't come for them to come into the knowledge of the truth, just like each and every brother and sister is waking up. It says, how long will you simple love, simple ones will you love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Most of our people are foolish, like it says in Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And one of the main reasons why they're foolish is because they hate knowledge. The truth is right here in front of them, but they hate the truth. That's why I'm the vast majority of them are going to be destroyed because they hate the truth. Matter of fact, let's prove that. Let's prove that the hate of the truth of our people is going to be the reason why many of them is going to be the undoing and the reason why they can't get the truth right now because they hate the truth. They hate Yahweh Shah. They hate, you know, they hate the light. You know, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. But let's show it real quick here. Second Thessalonians 2 and verse uh, 8. 2 Thessalonians 2 and 8, and it reads, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And the wicked is being revealed today. By who? The prophets. The spirit of the Lord's mouth, which is the prophets. Verse 9, it says, Even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. See, Esau is a devil. He's a, he's a liar. He's a deceiver. He comes with the, with the power of the uh, of, of the uh the adversary, Satan is the adversary, Shaitan in the Hebrew. So he comes with that power. You know, the earth has been given in his hand. So he has a power, you know, of that adversary, you know, which it says with all power, signs, and lying wonders. 
That's his technology, his pseudoscience, you know, etc. You know, those are the those are the powers, the signs, and lying wonders. Verse 10, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, most of our people are going to perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. So if our people would just receive this truth, that would be to the, to the saving of their souls. But it says because they receive not the love of the truth. So because they hated the truth is the reason why they're going to be destroyed. You know, let's go down to verse 12. It says, that they all might be damned, which means destroyed, be given over to this destruction that's coming. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth because they don't want to believe the truth. That's why they're going to be destroyed. But have pleasure in unrighteousness because see, our people continue to, to love wickedness. Once again, men, men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. So because they're given over to wickedness, they're going to be damned, which means go, damnation, destroyed, because they believe not the love or Salaki, because they believe not the truth. Now, verse 10, it tells you, because they receive not the love of the truth, and verse 12 told us, because they believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So continuing in the way of wickedness and sin is what's going to get two-thirds of our people destroyed. Now, why is that important? Let's close it out with this. This is what the Lord has to say about Esau's science. Because the scriptures do speak about that. First Timothy 6 and 20, it reads, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. And what's committed to thy trust is this truth, this amoth, because the real science, you know, is this truth. Because let's go into science. Because the Lord said, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Which is, he's telling Timothy to keep this word, right? The Lord said, hold fast uh, to that which thou hast, which is this truth. Now here's the word science. Science. You go into the word science, it means the intellectual and practical activity encompassing the systematic study of the structure and behavior of the physical and natural world through observation and experiment. So through observing and experimentation, which is goes into, you know, them hypothesizing, which is an ed educated guess, their science is, 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 is not is not actual. And then all of it is not factual. Now, there is some truth to certain parts of scientific evidence, but Esau will, will put science out as if as long as he says science and it came from a scientist, then it's, it has to be true. Because there's many things this devil says that, that, that has been proven to be not true, and he's still pushing it, even in school today. And, and part of that is, the, is the, the, evolution, the, the theory of evolution, you know, that man came from apes and monkeys and so on and so forth, that we evolved from that. That so-called mankind, you know, showing you that that couldn't be further from the truth. The Bible tells you, gives you the answers to truth and those things and many others. So now that's science. Well, let's go back and close it out. It's the book of first Timothy six and 20. It says, oh, Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. And the elect are doing that today. Keeping the words of the most high, believing in his words. You know, Esau will tell you, the devil will tell you that the earth has been around for five billion years, you know, which when you read the scriptures, you, you you find out that that's not true. That's not true. Earth has not been around for five billion years. You know, the earth is anywhere from about, you know, uh, uh, 12, 10 to 14,000 years old, you know, around 12,000 or so, give or take. So that's how old the earth is when you read in the Bible, you know. When you're reading the Apocrypha books, it gives you that understanding. So the actual amount of time, well, the, the, the most important part of it is, is that we know that it's not 5 billion years old. But Esau will tell you that, that the earth has been around that long. First Timothy 6 and 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust. Avoid profane and vain babblings, which is the ways of the world, which is, you know, all of this noise that we hear coming from this devil. All that's profane outside of the temple and vain. You know, meaning it's pointless and it's just babbling. They're just words. So a lot of Esau science is nonsense. And oppositions, it says in oppositions, oppositions to what? The truth was committed to thy trust. Anything that's in opposition to what we've committed to our trust, which is the truth. And oppositions of science, falsely so-called. So the Lord just showed you right there. There's going to be a lot of people using science in the latter days. Esau Edom 
and he got the other nations doing it too, using science, which is falsely so-called, which is not real science. This truth, this amoth, is the only true and real science on the planet, which is the words of the Most High, which supersedes all things. It's the peace and the understanding that, um, that surpasses all understanding, which is the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh you know, which is the only true power of heaven and earth. So with that, I hope that was edifying, you know, to the hopeful elect. I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rakak Wadash, double honor to the elders and apostles, the Yad, as always, who have labored faithfully in his truth and are indeed the true teachers of Israel today. Peace, love, blessings, and salutations, and much honor and respect to the hopeful elect, the brothers is, you know, pushing his truth on the four corners of the earth. Habayath, my Dabada, the house of David. The brothers is laboring to make their call of election sure. You know, and to the Akim and Akwathim who listen and believe on Hamashiach Yabashai, which is our Messiah, our Lord, and our Savior. To you, I say Shalom.